Okay, next car in line is BFTX 1567. This one's a little bit more decrepit looking and it has a lot more interesting uh, scratches and dent effects that I had to really go ham on to create. Uh, but it's just like before, all added details and everything. Um, a good look here at the graffiti that you can see and then all the rust work and everything. All done by hand. Looks really good. You can see all those fine details. All these cars are equipped with the uh, DOT safety stripes too as well, but look at how detailed the graffiti is. You can see all the patching starting to kind of chip away too. A lot of crazy weathering effects that I had to do to these cars to make them look right. BFTX 1539 is probably the most photographed car in the roster of BFTX uh, Apache wood chip cars. Uh, sporting the devs graffiti and all this really cool gang graffiti at the base here. Uh, so there's plenty of photographs to do this particular car, which I had no problems in doing. Again, all, proto all uh, prototype graffiti, custom details added by me, new couplers, wheels, everything, the whole nine yards here. Um, all the custom weathering effects, custom decals, everything. And again, a good look at all of the individually painted rust spots. I wanted to freaking go crazy, man. That took a lot. To recreate those and then all the hand painted graffiti and patchwork as you can see crazy man I mean I, I'm looking at these right now and I can't believe I was able to pull it off it's insane this is such a huge project another thing I had to do to all these cars as well uh, the uh, stock steps at the base of the car the uh, stirrups they're terrible they look horrible so I don't even use those so I replace those with handmade metal parts that I drill holes for and then install onto the sides of the car where needed. Uh, and that's on all of these cars, so that's another big detail that I had to add to each. Final car modeled in this set of BFTX wood chip cars is the BFTX 1533. This one has some unique patching, uh, especially the uh, heavy gray patch at the top. All those cars for the most part don't have that. That's a unique feature to just this car alone, so it was another unique prototype that I wanted to model. Again, all prototype graffiti, hand painted, uh, drawn, everything. Uh, you got all the dents, stings, scratches, pits, everything. All the scratches and everything on the sides of these cars is done with a dental pick and instrument like that. New trucks, new wheels, new couplers, all kinds of separately applied details. Looking at the ends here, you guys can see all the various effects for the rust pitting and scratching that these cars accumulated on the ends. The ends especially just got completely chewed up. Uh, you can see all the various gouges and scratches and the heavy kick-up spray and build-up at the base of the door, which are permanently welded in place. Um, I believe these were originally open-end cars, uh, so they could be dumped, but they were sealed shut, and you see a lot of these just completely bulge out. It's crazy. They got really, really heavily pitted and everything, so all these individual gouges and scratches are painted by hand. It took me hours upon hours just to do the ends of each of these cars. That's a whole story in itself. Custom patching, and you can see all these separately applied details like air hoses, uh, coupler cut bars, new brake wheels, everything. Looking at the loads in these cars, uh, these are all scratch built uh, using careful prototype reference. I tried to uh, spend oh, quite, uh, well, quite a great deal of research really into making these loads as accurate as possible. What CND loads are is mainly construction demolition, but you see a lot of other various materials kind of tossed in here. So my goal was to try to create a load that was as realistic as possible. and. I decided to basically invest a, a buttload of time into trying to create these. Uh, so what these loads are made out of are styrene bases, uh, in some cases, and styrofoam bases, which I cut to shape, inserted into the car, and then I basically, from there, cut the contours of the load, the slopes and everything in, took them back out, and proceeded to add all these various debris that I've collected over the years to recreate the look of the CND loads, which is basically a combination of uh, drywall dust, brick, uh, various scrap styrene, metal parts, aluminum shavings, steel shavings, uh, scrap aluminum, uh, all kinds of wood, debris, everything, man. I mean, these loads are made of everything, so there's all kinds of various materials. I can't even name all the different materials I use to uh, create these loads. And then the whole thing is wrapped in tool fabric, which I use to uh, 
cover them. These loads in real life are, have to have these tarps on them, otherwise the debris will fly out, so that's why they have these. But the tool fabric was an important step into making these look right, uh, and I was able to discover this material uh, by accident going to a fabric store a long time ago. You can see the loads are all different between cars here. No two are alike, and that's the really cool thing about these. Moving wired along here, uh, here's the opposite side of BFTX 1533, the last car I officially built. You can see all the effects. Here's the opposite side of 1539. The opposite side of 1567 here. Love it. Here is the opposite side of Unit 1583. All the nice patchwork and graffiti. And then lastly, the look at the first car I built in this set, which is 1562 with all of its unique graffiti and everything. All the nice details. This low shot here, you guys can see all the nice brake rigging and everything, and all the nice work done to the wheels and couplers and everything else. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up this video, guys. Like I said, I've been wanting to do this one for a while, but I've never been able to uh, get these right. i got to take some more photos of them then and try to display them on my uh, Facebook group and Instagram, too, but I just haven't had real, uh, a lot of time to do it. So I know a lot of you have, again, been asking me consen uh, consistently, when are you going to show pictures of these? When are you going to show videos? Well, here you go. So, like I said, I hope you can tell that I, I put a lot of effort into these. It's a real labor of love. I, I had to really learn a lot of new techniques to create these cars and everything. I mean... There's a lot of work in them, and a lot of work. It took me a long time to get everything right, and I'm proud to have a decent set of these cars now. Uh, like I said, it's something I've wanted to do since I was 10 years old, So, and I finally have them. So that'll pretty much wrap up this uh, video for now, guys. I'll do another one of these later on. i got some more uh, custom-built cars coming up that I'm going to show in a similar manner. Uh, if you guys like this kind of video where I, I really showcase a particular car, uh, leave some comments below. Let me know what you think of this kind of video and you know this kind of interpretation of just showing a particular car. Um, Along those lines, too, I am going to be doing a different kind of video as well, uh, basically like a model showcase coming up to kind of show my collection of trains individually. Uh, one piece of rolling stock, one locomotive at a time. So it'll be something similar to this where I talk in detail about the prototype and the car and everything and how I created all the effects on it, but it'll be one individual car. Not as extensive as this, uh, but still in detail, but just for one car, like I said, or one locomotive, whichever. Uh, so you guys can keep an eye out for that. Like I said, more scratch building coming, got more weathering videos coming, all kinds of nice stuff down the works here, so you guys can keep an eye out for that. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Facebook, Dance Custom Trains, slash Daniel Arnold. You guys can look me up there and follow my work to see more stuff like this. I'm always posting pictures regularly. And again, follow me on Instagram, CoolHand805, all lowercase. And you guys can subscribe here on YouTube as well for more content like this. So until next time, guys, thank you for watching. Appreciate it, as always. And I will see you next time. Take it easy, guys.